Hey, I, I wanted to come to you guys and let you know that I'm going to start doing a video, maybe a little short brief video on some of the effects, some of the chemistry that's going on with our herbs. Now, I got all of these herbs, so I'm going to try to do like two of them per week. And you're going to find some interesting information because I'm not just, uh, well, you know, I deal with the chemistry. So our very first herb on the, on the shelf is called alfalfa. Now you see, I have it in the whole herb form and the powder form. I like to pulverize them down just in case people want to put them in their juices, um, make, make capsules out of them. You, you can do anything with this. Now, some of the chemistry behind alfalfa. Very, very important herb. Now, I got a lot of important herbs, but this one in particular has to be grown in the mainland. That means it's not around any ocean. That means it has to go deep into the ground, maybe a hundred feet, uh, to get all of its nutrients. Now there was a study done in Japan where they was trying to find out why people were iodine deficient in the mainland opposed to on the shore. So uh, those people on the shore would always be able to get uh, seaweed, kelp, all the different mosses and all those different things to get their iodine. But when you have alfalfa, this is something that has to go deep into the ground to get its iodine, trace minerals of selenium, manganese, magnesium, potassium. It is a very, very good source of potassium. And all these other calcium and, and all these other different minerals. And it's also uh, a very good source of vitamins. Um, vitamin A, E, C, very good source of vitamin C. Uh, this is full of chlorophyll. Look how green that is, guys. So you already know that it has the ability to uh, beat thrombosis because of its K2, its K4, and its K7. These are all vitamins, uh, vitamins that you may not be familiar with. Uh, they have that ability to uh, break down blood clots. So this is also good for the heart. So when I'm talking about um, these different vitamins, they also have alkaloids. The alkaloids are good for the nervous system, the heart. Um, if you're dealing with uh, anticoagulant drugs, you don't want to take the alfalfa. Um, it also has a saponin effect to it, meaning that um, it can help women out with their hormonal issues. So it's kind of anti-estrogenic, um, and it also builds up stamina. So if you were into breeding horses or breeding animals, you notice that people that have horses, they use this to build up their libido and stamina for breeding purposes. So that is a good, good herb, alfalfa. One of the other things that you'll find that, um, being that it is, has this opponent effect, it can help women out with their lactation. So look up this information, guys. Now I'm not just throwing out benefits, I'm throwing out the chemistry on how this actually works. So um, if there is a person that has an autoimmune type of issue. This is something they cannot take. It's the reason why, because they have this um, amino acid in there called l cananavin When you look that up, you'll know that this doesn't work well with the physiological response in the gut. So it causes a lot of pain when a person takes alfalfa for lupus, systemic lupus. Um, so that's not what it's for. But if you have cholesterol problems, if you need help with metabolizing your cholesterol or metabolizing your blood sugar, you may want to start incorporating the alfalfa. If you're having problems with your skin or your blood, just having impurities in your blood, because I use this in my blood detox. So uh, there's a lot of different uh, multi-beneficial properties. It's very versatile when it comes to alfalfa. Mm -hmm.